Calcestis was a young Padawan, scared and left alone following the death of his master Jaro Tapal. Cal survived the Jedi Purge known as Order 66 thanks to the willing sacrifice of his master. He then left the life of the Jedi behind, becoming a scrapper until he was again thrust into the fight against evil when that evil came knocking. No! Look at this, a lightsaber. <laughs> I found the Jedi! Cal would join forces with Jedi Master Seer Junda and alongside her a plucky pilot named Grease Dritus, the playful BD-1, and the forlorn but exceptionally powerful Knight Sister Marin. The team would travel the galaxy together, taking the fight to the Empire for years. In this video, I will take a closer look at Cal's journey from that frightened young Padawan to the formidable Jedi Knight we see during the events of Dagon Garrus' quest to reach Tantalor. You were a Jedi Knight before you betrayed our order. Your name was Asana Tide. It's time to set you free. <laughs> Of course, I will be detailing Cal's strength, speed, skill, and all of his incredible abilities that are given to him by the Force to determine just how powerful the Jedi survivor is. After Cal was forced back into the light, revealing himself to be a former Jedi, he was way out of his depth. He had nothing but the training of a Padawan, which seemed like a lifetime ago. So out of touch with his Jedi abilities that a simple Force push or pull was a struggle for him. However, as the journey continued, Cal regained these abilities and realized even more powerful ones. After finding his footing, Cal would fight against multiple Inquisitors, one of those being the Ninth Sister who he definitively defeated in one-on-one -on -one combat. The other, the Second Sister, Trilla Sunduri, was the former Padawan of Cal's new master, Seer Junda, and unlike the Ninth Sister, Trilla had real promise and potential, and under the tutelage of Darth Vader, she blossomed into a force to be reckoned with. She considered herself equal to her former master in terms of force mastery. There's no technique Sir has that I haven't perfected and is even stated to be an expert lightsaber duelist, as well as being adept in the Force. Cal would find himself in multiple battles against Trilla, and despite his rust, he was able to hold his own and even got the better of her on multiple occasions. While Trilla was weakened due to her confliction in the final battle, it was still a test for Kestis, who would go on to claim that he likely couldn't ever defeat another Inquisitor and was afraid to face off against another one. At this point, Cal would be in the power ranges of the standard Jedi Knight, comparable to someone like Kanan Jarrus, who fared about the same in his encounters with the Inquisitors. Kanan, who had a similar beginning to his second life as a Jedi, was able to alter the course of multiple asteroids and damage a Comric class fighter, a feat calculated to require over 100 tons of energy to accomplish, or enough energy to level multiple city blocks. Additionally, Cal could match the power of Terran Malakos for a brief time, a fallen Jedi turned to the dark side. In this battle, Cal would be at a major disadvantage as Malakos was not only a former Jedi Master, but his power was amplified not once, but twice. First by turning to the dark side, which as Yoda tells us, is an easy path to gain more power immediately. While it's not more powerful than the light side, it is easier to tap into its vast power to begin with. Is the dark side stronger? No. 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 But the busier, more seductive. Malakos was also on Dathomir, a dark side nexus, which naturally amplifies the power of the dark side, making Malakos even more threatening. While Cal did need help to defeat Malakos, contending with him at any point would be a very impressive feat for any Jedi Knight to accomplish. Following this journey, Cal and his team would continue to battle the Empire where they could. And these adventures, of course, kept them on the radar of the Inquisitorius. In the five years that passed since he battled Trilla Sunduri, Cal's power would grow exponentially under the watchful eye of Jedi Master Seer Junda. 
He grew so much that in his second encounter with Ninth Sister, she was really just an inconvenience to him. An inconvenience that killed a bunch of his friends, sure, but you get the idea. Unafraid and undeterred by her threats, Cal dispatched her easily, showing us that his power, skills, and abilities had not only improved significantly, but his confidence had as well. However, once he releases the Jedi Knight Dagon Gera, we really begin to understand just how much Cal has improved over the last five years. Dagon Gera was a Knight of the High Republic, an era where the Jedi were at the height of their powers. Even Yoda was at his most powerful during this era. The strongest Jedi to ever live, Porter Engel, was also alive at this time. Dagon is referred to as one of the Jedi Order's finest warriors, and by the time of his final duel with Cal, his power had returned to him completely. While I wouldn't say Dagon is the strongest Jedi of the High Republic, he'd still likely be behind the likes of Porter Engel, Yoda, Avar Chris, and Elzar Mann. I'd say it's probably fair to say he's comparable to the tier of Jedi just below these four. One of the best examples of the Jedi within that range of power is Loden Greatstorm. Loden is referred to as one of the greatest Jedi of the High Republic, which I'd consider to be like a similar statement to that of Dagon's, who is one of the finest. Great Storm is able to deflect blaster fire from a starship, something that is incredibly difficult to do. Characters who have accomplished such a feat number fewer than five, with one of them being Darth Vader himself. However, Loden's most impressive feat is lifting a mountain. While his Padawan, Bel Zedifar, was there to help, the gap in power between Loden and Bel was astronomical, and Bel's assistance would be a drop in the bucket that is Loden's total force power. To compare this to Jedi of the current era, Yoda was also able to stop the momentum of a living mountain, and Loden is able to accomplish feats that characters like Asajj Ventress could not. And Asajj herself is no slouch, she's able to duel and even get the better of multiple Jedi Masters. So while we're making some assumptions here on how powerful Dagon was, I think it makes a lot of sense when comparing him to other great Jedi of the era, while keeping him within a realistic range below the best of the best. This is also supported by feats and statements of Dagon within the universe. Satari Kree refers to him as a renowned Jedi Knight. Renowned Jedi Knight Dagon Gara offers to be my escort on an uncharted world. <laughs> How could I refuse? Without your guidance, I'd never have made it here in one piece. Oh, careful now. Or well, someone might think you've learned humility and Dagon was able to claim victory over Ravis, a Gendai so powerful that it took many other Jedi Knights to eventually subdue after Dagon's turn. Ravis claims that Cal is likely Dagon's equal, and Cal proves it by defeating Dagon in battle as well, resisting the mind manipulation of Dagon and turning it against the powerful fallen Jedi. So with that in mind, I think it makes sense to say that Cal, at the very least, is at the level of other masters during the Clone Wars. Not Yoda or Mace Windu level, but surely at a similar level to the likes of Kit Fisto, Quinlan Boss, and others. Knights being as powerful or more so than Jedi Masters isn't really a new idea. Anakin was a knight and was more powerful than 99% of the Jedi Order. Ahsoka was about to be knighted before she left the Order and not long after was humiliating Inquisitors and dueling against the powerful Sith Lord Darth Maul. The precedent has been set and I believe Cal Kestis should be considered at this level as well. As for skill, Cal has shown incredible feats throughout his journey. As I mentioned, he defeats the Ninth Sister fairly easily and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dagon, showing he's capable of keeping up with former Jedi. Dagon is stated to bring the full skill of one of the Order's finest Jedi to bear, showing us that he's not only powerful but incredibly skilled as well. Cal isn't just a skilled duelist in his preferred style, but he is proficient in many different stances. He can, of course, use a single lightsaber like every other Jedi, but with his highly adaptable custom lightsaber, he can switch forms in an instant, completely changing the battle and turning the tide in his favor. He can fight with a double-bladed lightsaber like the deadly Darth Maul, use two at once like the acrobatic Ahsoka Tano, equip a crossguard and overpower the opposition like the brutal Kylo Ren, or even use a gun and reverse blade grip to become a truly unpredictable opponent. 
As for speed, Cal boasts massively faster than light reaction times, scaling to dozens of other characters with similar feats. Star Wars is funny like that, as most characters are able to react to these speeds in a pinch, and blaster bolts are also confirmed to be lasers. When talking about force abilities, there's really not much Cal can't do, his signature abilities being force stasis, where he can slow or in some instances completely immobilize the opposition, as well as psychometry, which is an incredibly rare ability that allows him to sense past events through the force by touching an object. Of course, Cal can push, pull, lift, and drop objects with the Force. Telekinesis is pretty standard for a Jedi. However, he has much more at his disposal. He has the Jedi Mind Trick, which he's learned to employ in battle, able to confound the minds of the most battle-hardened Imperials, such as Purge Troopers, who he can force to fight alongside him instead of against him. And again, Purge Troopers are very battle-hardened. They're trained specifically to fight against Jedi, so they would have the fortitude of mind to resist the standard Jedi mind trick, but Cal is able to overpower this. Through the Force, he is granted precognition, allowing him to sense enemy attacks before they happen and then react accordingly. The fortitude of Cal's mind should also not be understated. One of Dagon's most impressive and unique abilities is his talent for creating illusions and warping the minds of his enemies. It's so potent that he's stated to be able to manipulate even the strongest of minds. However, Cal is not only able to resist this, but turn it on Dagon, giving Cal the upper hand. But Cal isn't a one-man show. His trusty companion, BD-1, is also by his side and has on more than one occasion helped him out of a situation which would have left Cal defeated or worse. Additionally, BD also provides Cal with healing stims. While this is mainly a game mechanic allowing the player to use a healing potion, stim canisters can also appear outside of the game in other media. Here's a description of what they can do from Into the Dark. Groaning, Affy stumbled back from the machinery, her hands remained blue, and blisters had formed on her palms. A stim stabilizer, she gasped, the med packs in the orange emergency box. Wreath had it before she could finish talking. Quickly, he pressed it to her neck until he heard the hiss click of the medication being dispensed. In only seconds, her hands began to return to their normal color, and the blisters flaked away. And finally, there is the dark side, which Cal struggles with controlling in his most recent adventure. And after Bode's betrayal, Cal can call upon the dark side at any time to temporarily boost his power. Now, how much his power becomes boosted is sort of unquantifiable, but it's pretty impressive as he's able to one-shot almost any Imperial that he comes across, whereas it took him a minute to take down the most powerful Imperials. And that's all I've got for Cal Kestis. He's become so much more powerful in such a short time that the sky is seemingly the limit for Cal. His potential is immense, and I can't wait to see where he goes from here. What do you guys think? Do you think Cal is reaching those Jedi Master levels? Certainly not on the level of, you know, Darth Vader or his master, Seer Junda, but I think he's getting there. Let me know what you hope to see from him in his next adventure, and remember to like and subscribe. It does really help us out, and remember the motto, it's Cal Kestis over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.